Hey friends, back at Build 2018, we did a quick episode on Azure Sphere, and I promised we'd do a regular Azure Friday episode. Well, this is that episode. Now that Azure Sphere is GA, Katie is here to give me an updated overview of IoT device security and how Azure Sphere delivers comprehensive end-to-end -end device security that protects devices for over a decade, today on Azure Friday. Hey friends. It's me, I'm Scott Hanselman, it's Azure Friday. I'm here with Katie McCaffrey, uh, engineer, architect, engineering manager, mm -hmm. all-star, <laughs> generally cool person, talking to me about Azure Sphere. Yes. Now, I'm gonna have to speak from a place of ignorance, sure. and I appreciate your patience, as you always have been with me. Why would I not just use a Raspberry Pi or some off-the-shelf chip that I can buy for a dollar? Yeah, when totally. I want to do an IoT system. So Azure Sphere is an end-to-end -end solution to secure your IoT devices, mm -hmm. and so um, this project was actually started in Microsoft Research for how do we secure the nine billion connected devices or nine billion MCUs that are coming online, and a large percentage of that are getting MCU. connected to the internet. Uh, microcontroller. Thank okay. you. Um, and so we started from research principles. We produced a paper called The Seven Properties of Highly Secured Devices, and then we set out to build a product around that, and that product is Azure Sphere. Okay. Um, and so it, there is basically from lessons learned from, um, you know, being at Microsoft and Windows and um, best practices in the industry, we've decided there's these seven properties, and some of them require silicon things like a hardware root of trust, and so we have our uh, Pluton runtime, which is in every Azure Sphere chip. Uh, and then we have things that require an operating system and the hardware. So we actually have our own Azure Sphere operating system that runs on these microcontrollers, um, and it's based off of a modified Linux kernel. Mm. Uh, and then we actually have security services, which is the piece that I'm personally responsible for that guard every Azure Sphere device and do things like authentication. So we issue certificates to every single device to use talking to not only our services, but whatever services you would like your um, IoT devices to be doing. Mm. And uh, we do update the software, so we've already shipped um, you know, thousands of Linux patches uh, to the existing Azure Sphere devices in the wild uh, mm -hmm. today. And then we also do error reporting, which is thinking about like looking at telemetry from the devices, um, how they're running, are they crashing, what software are they running, and trying to detect vulnerabilities as well to protect them that way. So you just listed a bunch of things that support those principles. Yes. Does the average MCU microcontroller, and again, not a microprocessor like a Raspberry right. Pi, but a, a small microcontroller like the ones that run, uh, like all the little stuff, my my smart lights mm -hmm. and my thermostat. Mm -hmm. Do they have any of those things? There are bits and pieces, but we believe that like we're uniquely positioned at Microsoft to offer a really end-to-end -end solution that works together. So because we have this vertically integrated solution, we have a much higher uh, security bar overall. And so part of the reason we frame it as the seven properties is then you can go take these seven properties and look at Azure Sphere compared to whatever solution you're looking at and saying, does it does it meet the bar, right? Does it meet the criteria? Mm -hmm. So I've got like, let's say a smart light bulb or a smart mm -hmm. camera or a refrigerator. Mm -hmm. um, I've bought a number of those things at a, you know, a local bookstore based website mm -hmm. that delivers things very fast. Mm -hmm. And uh, frankly, a couple of them don't even, the companies don't even exist anymore. Right. Like, so are you getting software like, updates, yeah. right? Like in the no. past, like how do you update the firmware? Like the light needs firmware. Right. You like visit an unsecure local website yeah. and like post a bin file and right. it just dumps it into storage and then flashes. Right. So probably not the most secure it's just way to update your software. Wild, wild west. Uh, things even providing update is like most a lot of IoT devices didn't even provide a way to update. When was the last time your router software updated? Probably like never. Um, so. Oh wow. So there's like there's billions of unsecured MCUs out there running and they're going to live like that forever. Yeah, and so you think you see things like and like one of the other big principles is we only do certificate based authentication on these devices. There's no passwords anywhere. Um, and so like one of the big attacks was the Mirai uh, botnet attack, which was 100,000 devices that were compromised via an insecure password. There was no means to update these devices quickly or securely. And so they ended up DDoSing a major part of the East Coast data centers, right? And that caused a ton of damage for only 100,000 devices. Um, and so we want you know, everyone to be able to build great solutions and do digital transformation with their businesses and come up with, and we'll take care of the security for you, right? Okay, so this is security as a service at the IoT edge. Yes. I don't think about these things. I just write my business logic. Yeah. And you provide the best practices. Yes. 
Yes, okay. yes, yes. And really all you have to think about is writing your application. And mm. so, and one of the other great things we've done with Azure Sphere is really focus on the developer experience. And so when you're writing your application, um, there are samples up on GitHub that you can use to get started with. Uh, you just have to think about your application. It runs in sort of like a, sand, a secure sandbox. And so even if you have a security vulnerability in your application, it would really? be much harder to so like So it's a microcontroller, but there's still a sandbox of sorts. Yes, our operating system is still a high level operating system. Mm -hmm. uh, we have pieces from our security monitor, which that's the piece that interacts with our secure hardware. Uh, we have the Linux kernel, and then we have our OS applications that take care of things like update um, and other device operations. And then you run your application in the top of that sandbox. And so it provides much stronger security guarantees than something like an RTOS, where you just compile your application into the firmware. And so if there's an exploit mm -hmm. in your application, then like there's no compartmentalization uh, to protect the underlying operating system and perhaps be able to update your way out of it. So you said RTOS, real-time operating system. Yeah, and you can think about it like, these are really tiny, but you can think about it in a similar way. We provide a lot of the nice things like when you're in .NET, you're not running on the metal and no one's writing like assembly language code to write your .NET applications anymore, right? It does right. the CLR and .NET does right. a lot of the low nice level stuff is to, relative. for you. Right, and so this is still low level. You're writing C code, um, but you don't have to worry about a lot of these things like how do I update my application and like how do I obtain some certificates to authenticate securely and things like that. We just provide them for you. How do you balance that? Because I'm doing some low-level work right now, and I'm literally writing C code that says, make that pin mm -hmm. high, mm -hmm. which is pretty low-level. Like, I'm setting voltage on a mm -hmm. pin. And you still will be able to do that here. Like, mm -hmm. if you play with our dev kit, there's GPIO pins. We support a bunch of different other peripherals um, on the, the Seed dev board that Seed made running the MediaTek MT3620 chip. Um, and there's a couple other dev boards that we've announced since uh, build uh, two years ago. Mm -hmm. Last year, two years ago, time? Yeah, been a while. Uh, yeah, and so it, you're still able to control that. You're still doing like um, working with your pins. There's just a supported set of APIs, and one of the guarantees we make is that your apps will be backwards compatible through all of the OS updates we apply. Really? Yes. Okay, so that's interesting. So you can update this thing. Do you force it to update? We force the OS to update. We require, um, as part of sort of the terms of using these devices, is that you will get operating system updates. You can defer it for a period right. of time, say like sure. your dishwasher's running, right? But you promise it's not going to break things, so then you get the best of both worlds. Yeah, um, and, and this is really important because you look at, in the real world, when people can opt into updates, things like WannaCry and NotPetya, which were two big attacks, um, were basically done through exploits um, in operating systems that were fixed and patched like years ago, years before the attacks happened. Uh. And um, the, the the places that got attacked didn't update their operating system. And so that this is why we believe like if you can respond quickly and if you can update the operating system, you're much less likely to be targeted. I see. So it's less about zero days and it's more about 7,000 days. Like this is a 10-year-old bug you never patched it. It definitely ra uh, raises the bar for a compromise um, to happen, right? That's a really good way to put it. Raises the bar for a compromise. So up on the screen here, we've got a number of the different development kits. You said that there's a couple more coming. I can just go and buy one of these? You can, yeah. Um, so Seed is uh, makes two of them, and Avnet made another one. And so mm -hmm. you can go buy them and play with them today. Okay. And then I can go and walk through a complete quick start up here on Docs. And it walks me through it. And I notice that it says, you know, install Azure Sphere. I can use mm -hmm. Windows or Linux. And it says I can use Visual Studio Code. Yes. So this is new. Uh, we used to only support full-blown Visual Studio. Mm -hmm. And now we support Visual Studio Code. And you can run it on Windows or Linux. And so you can develop, you know, wherever you feel most comfortable now, which is really exciting. Okay. And I can actually debug my debug my system and I'm going to be using things like CMake mm -hmm. and Build and stuff that I'm familiar with if I've done any kind of embedded work before. It won't yep. feel foreign. Nope. Um, and we and the debug is like the really fun thing. If you actually hook up your Azure Sphere device to your laptop just via, you know, a USB uh, port, mm -hmm. then you can actually like hit F5 in Visual Studio and start line stepping through your code Seriously. and see it running on the device. And so that's awesome. It just makes app development a lot easier. Yeah, I have been actually working on a project right now with a 6502 trying to learn how programming was in the 70s and yeah. 80s. I'm flashing EEPROMs and then fishing them off of the board. So being able to step through would be a step up for mm -hmm. what I'm trying to do right now. And then if we go up here to Azure Sphere samples yes. up on GitHub, we've got all kinds of samples. I'm looking here at the Hello World high-level app, but there's actually a ton of samples, a lot. Yeah, so we have examples from everything like using GPIO pins to uh, getting hooked up with Azure IoT if you want to start sending telemetry event that way. Um, and so there's a lot of places to go play around, uh, clone the solution, get started. 
uh, and have fun, experiment and have fun with Azure Sphere. So Azure Sphere is out, it's happening. I think we can get a shot of the board here from Seed Studios that we put on our uh, desk. This is the MT3620 uh, development kit. And the board is quite small, right? But this is the mm -hmm. development board. I assume that in production, they can actually be even smaller than that, right? Yeah, and so the, the piece that's very specific, this little chip right here that's is the, the Azure Sphere MT3620 chip from MediaTek. Okay, and that is the magic. And then the board here is, is this size because we want buttons and development mm -hmm. stuff on it. Mm -hmm. So then when you go to production, you might design your own board yep, you and then put that chip on it. Mm -hmm. Yep, yeah, you can take the chip and put it on whatever module and make it as small as you like and only add the pins that are necessary to and, reduce cost. And hide it in the light bulb that will then be secure, promising for how many years? Uh, 13 years from the creation of the sock of the, the chip. 13 years. Yeah. That's fantastic. I cannot think of a device in my house that has lasted that long. So that is a, that is a nice promise to have. So folks can go and check that out at azure.com uh, slash azure-sphere. Go ahead and search for Azure Sphere. Check it out at um, their Getting Started, where they've got a whole series of devices that you can go and buy. I'm having a blast learning about secure IoT solutions today on Azure Friday.